Hi there, it's Paul Pavlinovich with episode 25 of Point Click Guide. This time we're talking about managing your photos. Photos are also known as digital assets. Today's topic is requested by one of my subscribers, and we're going to talk about a bit of a dry topic, but I'll do my best to make it interesting. So how important are your photos? Each year I make about 20,000 photos. Well, maybe not this one. For local guides, I've got phone photos and digital camera photos. Street view, I've got the phone and the Theta 360. My family things, I've got phone and digital camera and events and model gigs and the like using the digital camera. So how important are yours? Because I know mine are kind of important. So I do most of my photo management in Lightroom, which is a subscription-based product. I've got roughly 10 terabytes of photos stored locally. I can store whatever I want in whatever quality I want. It handles all formats, but it's local only to me. There's no sharing and I can do all the editing I want in this tool. So when I ingest my images, that's the process of getting them from the camera onto the computer, I first copy them off the card onto a, a dedicated folder. I then use ingestion software, in this case I use Lightroom, to make a copy of the images into my working store, which is where I do my editing and my rating and my culling, and a temporary backup store. Now the temporary backup store isn't kept very long, it only lasts as long as the edit session. We also have local storage. And for this, I use RAID 1. This is an automatic duplication from one disk to another one. In this case, I use SSDs because I need the speed. This is not backup though, and a lot of people confuse that. And is this enough or do you need more? Well, I'd say you need more. So, I've got a second RAID 1 array, and I make a manual copy using software called Perfect Backup. And this is true backup, because I get a total copy of my working storage onto the other drives. Is that enough though? No. I also have a collection of external disks that I keep my current working material backed up to. And I try to keep one of those, at least one of those at work, but this year, well, they're all at home, aren't they? I think we all know why. And this is proper backup. And this is probably the minimum that you need. But is it enough? Mm. I do one more. So for all of my really important images, I also copy them into the cloud. Now just remember that the cloud is just someone else's computer. So make sure you're using a service that will actually look after your images for you. To keep my cloud costs down, I rate all of my images in Lightroom for anywhere from one to five stars, where one is truly awful and five is truly excellent. I'm quite ruthless about it, so only about 5% of my images achieve five stars, and those ones get backed up to the cloud. I also back up all of my family images to the cloud, because after all, they're the ones you don't want to use. It doesn't matter how shitty the photo is, you want to keep it because of the memories. So what cloud services do I use? Well, Google Photos is an obvious one. Everything from my Pixel phone gets backed up there. And it's currently free for high quality images, but that's going to change. For people who have got a Pixel, you get to keep your free storage for a little bit longer. It stores in great quality, but it is lossy. So it's not an archival storage by any means. And it handles JPEG, the Apple format, and some of the raw formats. It's good for sharing, but it's not an archive. One of the other things you could use is Google Drive. It's free for up to 15 gig. It stores in whatever quality you upload. It handles most formats natively, and it's okay for sharing, but be careful about security because if you put sharing on a folder, unless you manage that, you might have someone unexpected in your drive and be careful what permissions you give them. It's okay for archive purposes, and it's not too expensive as cloud storage goes. There's a lot of cheaper options, but you've always got to be a little bit careful and make sure you know the fine print. I also use lightroom.adobe.com. This is part of my Lightroom subscription and I buy some additional storage every year. This retains in the quality that you upload, 
It handles all formats, it's professional grade, and it's archival. Its only downside is it doesn't have any kind of community, but it is really good for sharing photo shoots to the people that you've shot. They can do all sorts of things like choosing what images they want you to process more, and they can rate them, and they can choose the ones that they want to download as well. I also use Flickr. I'm not on Flickr a lot. Uh, I'm starting to get back into it because some of the other services I use, like Instagram, are starting to um, irritate me, shall we say. So Flickr's free to start for up to a thousand images, I think, from memory. And then you start paying for storage. It retains the quality that you upload. It handles all formats. It's considered professional grade. And it is archival, meaning they don't change your images. It's got a pretty good community if you can manage to get a following. Getting in this late in the game in Flickr is probably a little bit hard. You can see how many followers I've got. You can also see that I only follow one person, so I don't really help myself there. One important thing is that it avoids all the eggs in one basket. So local guides, you'd expect to be all Google. Well, have you had a Google service turned off on you yet? I've probably lost a few in my lifetime. When you're choosing a photography-oriented cloud service, you need to ask yourself a few questions. You need to be aware of the storage and subscription costs. The services let you see your best images anywhere. Well, do they? Not always. Some of the backup services, it can actually be hard to get to your data. How long does it take to recover your data if you need it? How long to download all of your data? Can you do it in bulk? Are there fees for a bulk download? Is it stored in archival quality, which means they don't change your images? And what happens when you die? Is there some kind of inactivity service that can send a message to a, a relative or a loved one who you trust to look after your images. I mean, I've got boxes of images from people from the past from my family, which I like to go through, and I'd like the same to happen to my digital collection. You've got to be really aware of the free cloud backup services. They look great because they're free to upload and they're free to store but they've really got you when you want to get that data back. Often, they have a long lead time to recover, which can actually be months. Often, they're really slow to download, and they limit the size, the count of the files, and the bandwidth that you can consume from their service while downloading, which is why it can sometimes take months to get your data back. Often, they have a really big fee for the download because they know your stuff's gone, and this is where they make their money. And often they're not actually archival, so they reduce the size of your images, which means that you lose some quality. Often these things don't have inactivity services, which means that they're simply lost when you die, because when you stop paying, any cloud service simply turns off. Well, that's it for this episode. This has been number 25, and we've been talking about managing your photos. Pop your questions down in the comments below and I will happily answer them either here or on Connect if it's a big topic. And I'd really love it if you subscribed and get onto the playlist for Point Click Guide.